What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. Um, you know, when I think about discovering all the evil that is in the world and, you know, talking talking about all that, you know, people are doing and, you know, different things like that, I think, you know, it can feel overwhelming sometimes because, um, you know, it seemingly seems like the world is just a place where you know you're always suspicious of someone you know you always are you know kind of questioning someone's integrity or someone uh you know someone uh's morals and different things like that and so you know as the world is unraveling i think um you know one thing that we can do is sort of look inwardly and take a self-assessment and sort of have confidence in that, you know, we can see that we ourselves are not necessarily doing anything wrong. And, you know, not necessarily from the standpoint of having to show others that we aren't doing anything wrong. Of course, you know, we shouldn't necessarily do something you know, uh, for someone to, you know, say that we are doing something wrong. You know, the Bible specifically talks about how, um, you know, we should not give anyone any reason to say that we are doing something wrong. Um, but, you know, I think one of the things that we can sort of, uh, not necessarily trust in ourselves, but we can just, you know, have an assurance of how, you know, we know our own behavior and, you know, we can say to ourselves, well, at least I know that I'm not doing anything wrong. And, you know, I think that, you know, we know at least one person, you know, you yourself are doing the right thing instead of, you know, having this mindset of, you know, um, kind of being so suspicious of everyone which we should already kind of you know assume that you know most of everyone you know is uh sort of you know doing something wrong or incorrect in a way but it's not really our place to really discover everything that someone is doing wrong i think that you know for sure you know there's a place for you know different things like that and as far as investigating and different things like that but you see you know the world is so subjective uh when pointing out something right or wrong you know um the world especially you know the god rejecting part of the world you know um they may say that you know this over here is wrong like oh yeah you know you shouldn't steal a car and murder six people and different things like that but yet and still you know if you would point out something else uh in regards to you know something that is wrong you know when you point out something else that is happening that is wrong you know then um you know people will say something you know, and, you know, people will either reject it or, you know, accept that, you know, what they thought of is sort of right or wrong. And, you know, when you think about maybe what's happening in public schools, you know, um, you see that, you know, certain things that they're bringing into schools that, you know, don't have anything to do with education and don't have anything to do with, you know, uh, really even sex education and different things like that. Yet, you know, they don't have anything wrong to say about that, you know, but yet, you know, in this other area, you know, they'll point out that, oh, you know, what you did is so wrong, what you did is so messed up. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, they, the world may get one thing right, you know, but yet 
they get all these other things wrong. And especially, you know, one of the biggest sins is, you know, rejecting Jesus Christ, rejecting faith in Jesus Christ. And so um, I think when we sort of uh, look at our own self and, you know, take take that inward look. And I think we can, you know, at least have some assurance as far as, you know, having an awareness of, you know, uh, your own actions and you can have that confidence before God in that, you know, wow, you know, at least, you know, I know that I'm not, you know, walking in these type of ways and, you know, having that, um, you know, uh, kind of confidence in your own actions, not necessarily from the standpoint of saying that, you know, oh, I'm so good and everyone else is so bad. I think, you know, I'm just talking about, you know, when having that mindset of how, you know, corrupt the world is, I think, you know, we have to sort of, uh, you know, take the plank out of our own eye before trying to, you know, take the plank out of other people's eyes and, um, um, I want to read a Bible verse that I think I'm kind of getting this thought from. So. I think I'm getting this from Proverbs uh, 14 verse 14 uh and then the king james version says the black the backslider in heart shall be filled with his ways his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself and so um obviously you know we know later on from scripture that you know jesus said that no one is good you know only god himself is good you know, even as Christians today, you know, the Bible doesn't necessarily call us good, you know, even though we are, you know, in right relationship with God, but still, you know, we don't necessarily know the goodness of God as far as, you know, all of the, what God does and what makes him good, even though there are some places, you know, in scripture that tell us that, you know, we are filled with the goodness of God and, you know, we're, we're walking in, you know, uh, ways that are good. But anyway, you know, let me read this verse again. And so, uh, Proverbs fourteen fourteen says the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. And so, you know, I think sometimes, uh, when we are talking about end times, you know, we cannot necessarily be satisfied with the state of the world or the things that are going on, or even, you know, maybe in our spouse or in our kids when we see that, you know, maybe they aren't living right. And so it's hard to find maybe that satisfaction of, you know, wow, there's no one, you know, living right. And I think one other place outside of just sort of, you know, judging our own actions in a way not to say that we are sort of, um, you know, uh, saying, coming from a standpoint that, hey, everything that we have done, we've sort of, you know, become our own righteousness or made our own righteousness uh, or, you know, we're the cause of walking right with God. No, you know, but I was going to say that, you know, we can look to God and know that he is doing what's right. And, you know, there's many saints that are also doing what's right. And there's many, um, you know, angels that are doing what's right, too. And so um, I think sometimes it's so easy to get narrow minded. And especially when we don't necessarily think of God's goodness, you know, um, you know, we don't always think of God in a way of being the majority and, you know, um, having that, um, you know, uh, connection to, 
you know, God in such a way of saying, you know, hey, I know everyone in the world is doing what's wrong, but at least, you know, God is doing what's right. And so um, I think that, you know, um, when we think about who is sort of exalted in this world, you know, maybe we think of maybe the smartest guys, you know, on the planet, like, you know, um, an Albert Einstein or, you know, someone who's won a Nobel Peace Prize or someone who is more, you know, a powerful president or, you know, um, a great military leader or something or maybe someone as far as entertainment is concerned, you know, someone who's a great singer, you know, someone who's a great actor, um, you know, different people that we sort of sometimes can exalt in our mind you know, we have to realize that God is greater than all those people, you know, um, and, you know, God is, you know, so much greater than us. And I don't think we always think of God in that way, you know, and even I think saying this statement, I think sometimes we don't understand how great God is, you know, and I don't think it's really an understatement because, you know, when we, have we at least look at some of the evidence of what God has done, you know, we can sort of get a taste of it as far as, you know, God creating the universe, God creating, you know, the earth and, you know, the beauty of the earth. Um, when we look at specific things that God has set up and then we also look at his creation in people. And I guess we can sort of make the connection of, you know, when we see a talented person, you know, it's really God's creation, you know, and we don't always attribute uh, even the things that people do as, you know, wow, this is from God, you know, and God has caused all of this to, you know, come about. And so we don't necessarily give, you know, that glory and praise to God. And so um, I just wanted to make this podcast on talking about how you know, when we see how the world is unraveling and we see, you know, more and more evil. And I think one thing that we're noticing as we see the snake eating the other snakes, as far as, you know, Jesus said, a kingdom divided cannot stand. And, you know, even though the world is united against, you know, fighting against God, you know, they are still divided as far as, you know, between themselves and, you know, they are destroying themselves. And, you know, obviously God has a part to play in, you know, their destruction. But I think one thing that is evident as far as, you know, watching what unbelievers do is that they are destroying each other. And one thing that I notice is that, you know, when you see an evil person, you know, another evil person dislikes that other evil person because, you know, they have to be greater than that person. And so it seems like, you know, even though, you know, Romans, uh, I think chapter two says how, you know, they encourage others to do, you know, evil things. I think, you know, when you actually look at how some of these things play out, you know, Uh, evil people don't always support other evil people and it seems like they also just you know destroy each other and you know consume each other and I think that's you know evident especially in Revelation you see that uh, I think it's the ten kings destroy the uh, prostitute the uh, prostitute of Babylon the, the mother of all prostitutes and they burn her with fire And so that's just one example of how, you know, even though you have evil, you know, in some cases, you know, you know, it, they destroy each other. And so one thing we have to do is, you know, realize that, you know, um, when the world is falling apart, you know, we know that uh, God, his influence is greater and the light, you know, uh, is greater than the darkness. And so, um, thanks so much for checking out this podcast. Hopefully this was helpful to someone and I will talk to you on the next one. See ya.